today's show, we're going to be talking about online dating. Yeah. I'm really excited about it because I checked out the U.S. Census Bureau, and it in the 44% of Americans are single. Can you guys believe that? 44%. Which means that there's 100 million Americans, just Americans, that are single. For y'all that are saying, ain't no good man out here, there's 100 million adult <laughs> Americans that are single. And out of those 100 million, there's 40 million people that are doing online dating. Can you guys believe that? But out of that 40 million, there's only 17% that are actually getting married. So I have two special guests, Jennifer Spears and Nadine Jones. Yay! And they're here to dive into it because one of them has been online dating for a while and it just hasn't worked out. And the other one met her husband through online dating. So I would just, I can't wait to hear your stories. So Jen, you go first and share your story. Yeah, sure. So um, just to give you a little bit of just a uh, backstory, um, probably like the end of 2011, um, I was a complete mess and I was in a relationship that I needed to get out of. And the Lord told me to leave the relationship. He told me to leave DC after living there for two years and to move back to Atlanta. So, um, that's what I did. So in 2012, that was pretty much, um, a period of, um, just transformation for me. It was a very pivotal point in my life where God was just pruning and molding me and getting all that junk out that I accumulated from um, being in the world. And one of the things that he told me was that he no longer wanted me to um, have sex, not until I'm married. And that definitely um, was one of my struggles. And, um, but I was obedient. And in 2012, when Pinky Promise Atlanta started, Yay. yes, <laughs> I was at the very first meeting and I was able to get accountability part partners. And, and, and so 2012 was, was just, you know, um, me and Jesus. So in 2013, I'm just, you know, still me and Jesus and I'm just going on with my life, my relationship with God. And, um, the Bible story was airing. And I guess, I don't know if, um, Christian Mingle was sending all their advertising dollars to <laughs> the Bible story because it was like several commercials. And I remember I laughed at it and I was just like, like, who, like really Christians actually going online and meeting each other. And I laughed at it. And, um, I, I remember the Lord uh, specifically saying, well, you met, um, you found out about pinky promise. I used online for you to find out about pinky promise. Mm -hmm. You met Heather online. You met Lori, you know, through pinky promise. So many, um, amazing women who are just, um, so, uh, so a, a part of my journey who helped me. And he's like, so why wouldn't I be able to use that? Um, you know, to, to, to bring your spouse. And, you know, I, I still struggled with that. I'm like, I just, I, and I think I struggled with the idea of, actually not meeting a man the non-traditional way yeah. because you know most people you hear their stories and you're like oh well she met her husband in church or she met her husband here and I just didn't want that to be a part of my story but still I I, I felt led and I built a profile on on Christian Mingle uh -huh. so you know fast forward um build the profile and um my inbox was lit like literally <laughs> um <laughs> it was and, uh, you know, you get all of these different messages. And um, one of the things that I did not do was I didn't go on there and kind of like stroll through or message people. But I um, some messages I would respond to. And, you know, some of the, the responses back wouldn't be good. But anyway, so one of the guys that actually messaged me back, I um, ended up responding to him. And um, we agreed to meet. And we actually never ended up meeting. What happened was uh, he scheduled a date. I was busy that day, but I cleared my schedule to make sure that I would get everything done just so we could meet. Five minutes before, he uh, ends up uh, telling me, oh, I'm going to have to cancel because I have this, I have this, uh, this uh, going away party. My friend has a going away party. And so I immediately get upset. And I'm like, no, you know what, you can, you can lose my number because one of the things that I had on my list was that I wanted a man who would honor his word and that he would keep a commitment because I was tired of, you know, just the same old, same old. So, so I, I, what happened was I ended up um, 
telling him to lose my number and I canceled my profile on Christian Mingle because I just felt like I felt so hurt. I was like, this is a waste of time. Yes, it's a waste of time. I must have missed God. I must have missed God. And um, I go to check my email, just not even checking uh, for a Christian Mingle message, just randomly checking it. And I get a message from SLS 1911. And in the email, um, he actually read my profile. He responded to the questions that I had. He actually wrote like almost two pages. And I couldn't even read the whole message in my email. I had to actually log on to Christian Mingle to read the rest of it. And then when I get there on on the uh, the to read the rest of the message, I could not find his message because there were several other other messages there. And then so now I'm really like, well, how did that message get in my actual email, but none of these other messages got here? So I had to kind of dig through and find his message. And then once I found the message uh, and I read to the bottom of it, and he's, you know, specifically said what he was um, looking for. And one of the things that really stuck out is he said that he was honoring God. He did not want to have sex until he got married. And, um, and I was like, this is an amazing God. I'm going to have to respond to it. Yeah, so God. I responded. Um, we uh, messaged each other back and forth. We uh, finally talked on the phone. And after about a week and a half, we met in person. We started courting, you know, with the purpose of wow. marriage. Six wow. months later, we got six months later, we got engaged. Wow. And um, nine months after we got engaged, we got married. And we've been married for three years. Wow. It'll be three years in July. Wow. Yeah. That is an amazing yeah. story. No, that's so cool. <laughs> I love that you were led by the Holy Spirit. And yes. I love your motive wasn't to go on there to be like, I'm about to get me a man today. I'm about to get me all types of mans. And, or I'm about to just go on a bunch of dates with a bunch of people because I don't feel good about myself kind of thing. So I love your story. Okay, now Nadine, your turn. Now you, you're still single, but you've yes. been going on, on there looking for dates, right? How long have, or not just dates, but a relationship purpose. So how long um, have you been online? Okay, well, first of all, I'm part of the 44% of the single people, just so everyone know. <laughs> Congratulations to you and your awesome story. My story is not that awesome. <laughs> so I decided to go on Curse and Mingle as well because I just feel dating as a Christian woman is hard. And I'm a flight attendant, I'm in school, and I have a nonprofit work with veterans. You would think with all the people that I know that I would find a man, but I have not. So with Christian Mingle, I have not had a good experience. There was one gentleman I gave my uh, number to. We talked on the phone. We texted a little bit. And then, like, a couple of nights later, he sends me an appropriate picture. From Christian Mingle? Yes, See, Christian you know Mingle. <laughs> so I was mm-hmm. like, he's like, are you going to send me one back? And I was like, no, why did you send me that? He goes, are you a prude? If you're a prude, I can't talk to you. I was like, do we met our Christian Mingle? What are <laughs> right. you talking about? So that tells me that, I mean, you have to test every spirit. Like, you can't, yes. just because they're on Christian Mingle doesn't mean that they're actually Christian. No. Amen. Because I, my experience <laughs> thus far... <laughs> I just feel like some of these men just like, oh, well, they're nice Christian girls and they'll believe whatever I tell them. If I just say I believe in God, that's what they want. So like some of these men, I'll say, well, are you, do you want a court? Are you dating with purpose? Are we going to be equally yoked? And they don't understand what that means. I said, how can you call yourself a Christian dating if you even know what those terms are? Another thing is in my profile, I posted, I'm a daughter of a king and expect to be treated as such. So they think it's cute that I want to be called princess. I'm like, that's not what it's about. <laughs> so it's sad because it's like, that's my experience with these men. And then I did go on a couple of dates. One date I went on, I thought that he was a nice guy and we were talking and I asked him who he lived with, just making conversation. Oh, I live with my ex. I'm like, why do you live with your ex? He said, well, I felt bad we broke up. I wanted to move back to Detroit, so I wanted her to stay with me because I live in a nice area. And they live together now. I'm like, so he was done because he thought, well, what we do behind closed doors, nobody has to know. I'm like, I met you on Christian Mingle. Like, this is not what I'm looking for. So that was one guy. Did you see any red flags before you started to go out with him? No, it's like they they seem like they say the right things. They might read Mm. your profile and see what you're looking for or what you want, and they just paint this portrait of what they think you want in a man and then I think when they meet you they just want to give you whatever story and hope you be desperate enough to fall for whatever they're telling do you think that the men prey on women might I do I do because I think with a man they just think if you're a Christian woman you're saved all they say oh I believe in God or I'm a believer I go to church that makes them a good person but everyone that goes to church is a true believer and is dating with purpose Amen. You said something interesting. You said it's hard to find a man. Yes. And 
and my advice to that is we shouldn't be looking for no man. You know what I mean? Like I, and I love that you said that Mm -hmm. and I'm thankful that you're so transparent about saying that because I feel like a lot of women think that they think it's hard to find a man, but my advice is we shouldn't be looking because he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. And at times we get looking in all the wrong places and all the while the Holy spirit is saying, if you look to me, seek me with all of your heart and, and I, and I will reveal to you who you're supposed to yoke yourself together with. Mm -hmm. Um, do you feel like you ever had, like, what is your, I want to hear your worst absolute date ever that you had. Maybe, like, is like a catfish? Was it a situation <laughs> like that? Do you really want to know this story? We want to know this story. It's kind just of embarrassing. spill it. Okay, so you know how we take good selfies nowadays. That's how you do. And sometimes you just get the face shots. Ladies, pay attention. Face shots, you need a body shot, too. So I was, <laughs> this guy was cute. He seemed super nice. We went out. He was huge. And I, mean, I don't judge people, but he was, like, overly morbidly obese so he was really big and I felt bad because I just felt you know that kind of um it just he kind of tricked me you know you send me good little shots here and there but when you're really big and I felt bad because I didn't really know what to say I kind of wanted to leave but I stayed just to be nice yeah. that's probably my worst experience okay. now <laughs> tell me what was your motive for going online to do online dating um I said, I'm just so busy and I just feel is dating as a Christian woman, I want to find a Christian man. So I just figure if I have a profile, I list, you know, you need a man of God, a servant's heart. I just list what I'm looking for that I'd be able to find it because it's so hard. Yeah. Um, what about you, Jen? What do you feel like is mo- people's motive, I guess, for going online to do online dating? I, I, I honestly um, agree with, um, with Nadine after, you know, my friends met Sean and they were like, Ooh, okay now. Okay. And now they all went on there. Like they all, whether they, one of them went on all of them, literally every single last one of the online dating sites, because they felt like my, because that, you know, they, they felt like, well, if it could happen to Jenny, Jenny could happen to me. And like I told them it will happen for you, but that is the way that um, God designed me and Sean's love story. He has a specific love story for you. You have to be led. So, yeah. and it didn't work for any of them because they went on there with the wrong motives. You yeah, know? that's true. It's interesting because God has a way of introducing anybody any way that he wants exactly. to introduce you with. And that's the thing about walking by faith and living for God. My husband always says, him and I were like two ships going towards the lighthouse and the lighthouse is being Christ. And he was serving and I was serving in ministry and we were loving God, living by faith, free from unhealthy relationships. We were living for Christ and then the Lord connected us. And that's the thing. We, I don't believe that we should go searching for anybody in general. You might hear one person's story be like, oh, she got a man at church. Let me go to church on Sunday and get me a man. That's the thing. Our motive is wrong. And I feel like our heart is wrong in it. And I know that um, in Ecclesiastes 3, it says there's a season under the sun for everything. And most times, some of y'all are trying to force your seasons. And you're wondering why God isn't coming through on Christian Mingle. And it's like, you're trying to force it. I know for like, for example, my husband and I, we went to the same church. We walked by each other for three years straight, you guys. And he was always like the super serious guy in a suit. Like, but we were friends on Facebook. So we had met each other beforehand, but we connected on Facebook. We got chatting on Facebook one day. So that's a way that the Lord used to link us together. I mean, we could have met at church. We could have walked by each other and started talking. I mean, there's many times I walked by him, but we just never connected. And that's the avenue that the Lord used. We shouldn't try to put him in a box in some type of formula and say, all right, God, if it worked for Jen, I'm about to go on there right now after the show and get me a man. And the thing is, that goes back to the thing. Are we being led by the Holy Spirit? Or are we being led by our flesh in general? Now, what advice would you give to somebody that, Nadine, that's online right now, that's frustrated? I mean, have you, are you still on there? No, I gave up. I'm over it. (laughs) How many dates would you say you went on in the past year? Off of there, about seven. Okay, so you really tried. You put in effort. I did. And actually, you know what's sad? It's one of the gentlemen I met, or I can even call him a gentleman. One of the men that I met was married. And then, so he just came and he just tried to, he was just trying too much. And I just knew. So after like two weeks, I'm like, something's not right with you. Are you being honest? He's like, well, I'm going through a divorce. And I'm like, you're still married. Like, I can't talk to someone else's husband. I totally, I stopped talking to him at that moment. Like, just, I just feel bad, you know, for women out there because men are out here doing these things thinking it's okay. Yeah. And what I love about Ecclesiastes 3 again is that if it's your season in September 19th, you know, 2020 to meet your spouse, you can't force it right now. It's not even God's timing. 
And I know that if I knew this for a fact, I had a desire for marriage. I knew it was a desire in my heart. And I knew that I had to trust God to bring it to come to pass. And sometimes we try to force it. We say, Mm -hmm. you know what, God, you're taking too long. I need to go ahead and help you out. So let me go online and get me a man. And the danger in that is some of these um, websites, what they do is they try to match you with somebody that is just like you. But typically with God, he pairs you with somebody that is literally your exact opposite. Because what he does is he allows for you to eliminate each other's weaknesses. So, again, we shouldn't go searching. I mean, I don't believe that we should search for a spouse or a relationship. I don't. I feel like we'll end up empty and frustrated, like your friends that try to go on and copy your formula. It doesn't work like that because God has different ways of doing different things. Amen. Amen. Now, um, Jen, what would you say to somebody that's frustrated in their single life right now? And they're just like, you know, Jen, it worked for you. I like your testimony. But, you know, I'm just I can't meet a guy at church because, you know, I don't see any guys there. So what would you say to them to encourage them in their single season right now? I would say that you just have to trust God's timing, that it will happen. God placed a desire in your heart for marriage, and it will it will happen in God's timing. Don't try to rush it. Just like when I met the guy that was on there who ended up, you know, who I ended up canceling the date with, and I, I got so frustrated about it, but at the end of the day, I said, you know what, God, I was, I'm good with it being me and you. I'm good with it just being us. I was very content with it. I'm like, you're the one who told me to go on Christian Mingle. <laughs> but even still, God said, I told you to go on Christian Mingle, but I did not tell you to respond to everybody. Amen. So you're on Christian Mingle, but you're still not being led by me because everybody doesn't need a response. Just like if you meet someone at the gas station and they ask for your number and you're like, oh, look what he's driving. Oh, look, he, he's very handsome. And you give him your number. Ask God before before you even say hello, before it even goes exactly. past hello. So just make sure that you're led and make sure that you're just that you're content. If you're out there just trying to to fill a void with a man, it will never, it will never happen. I'm married and it won't happen. If you get married for those reasons, it's gonna just create more problems in your marriage. Amen. No, I totally agree. Um, Nadine, do you feel like society puts pressure on you to be married and to have this white picket fence idea? Yes, it does a lot. And especially because I'm getting older and then I said going to school too. So here I am at school and I'm actually a group leader at school for the intercultural varsity. And then all these like 21 year old kids are engaged. So I'm like all these like young people that I'm ministering to are all engaged. They're all planning these marriages. And then I'm old enough to be some of their moms, believe it or not. And it's like, I'm still single. So I'm just like waiting and waiting. I'm like, God, when is it going to be my time? Yeah. I always say this, um, we wait for buses we we wait for airplanes and you know your flight attendant and you know how that is it's like okay it's coming at 12 it's coming at 12 all right let me make sure I'm prepared I'm ready we don't wait for a man because what happens is you're sitting there and you're looking at the time where my man at Jesus my clock is ticking Jesus come on I need you to hurry up I know a story of a, of a woman and again this isn't a formula this is a testimony to encourage you but she was believing God for her spouse and she was in her 40s and she just felt like you know God I trust you and I'm going to walk by faith and I'm going to believe that you're going to bring him at the right time. And I'm just, I'm just going to, I'm just going to stand on that. And she met her spouse um, at 40. And I, I want to say at a grocery store or something. And he, and he said, I want to be celibate. I want to wait till I'm married. And so they got married six months later. She gave birth to their first son and then their second son, I think at 45. And so, and that's the thing, the thing about God is he can restore your youth. Sometimes we get worried like, God, I don't want to have a child at 45. I don't want, Instead, say, God, I surrender my time to you. I surrender my heart to you, my plans to you. I'm not going to try to rush ahead of you because what it ends up doing is creating heartbreak and frustration. And that's what it did for both of you. You responded to somebody that you know you shouldn't have. And same with you. You responded to somebody. So, again, we have to ask ourselves, you know, what is my motive? I know there's a lot of, like, speed datings. There's all those different things. And I feel like it comes on from the pressure of family. And I want to talk about family because I feel like family, especially on the holidays, y'all know. I remember when I was 26 and single, I'd gone home for Christmas. And my family was like, girl, your clock is ticking for real. Like, you old. Like, you you need to get you a man and have you a few kids. And I'm like, no, um... First of all, I need to be married to a godly man and I need to make sure that he's a priest of our household and I need to have some standards in place because I can't just be popping out kids and creating a whole nother generation with somebody that shouldn't have made it past hello. So 
for you, did you guys ever feel pressured by your family members um, to get married, to have kids, and do so forth? I'm blessed. I Amen. My mother, she, especially after my last relationship, she was like, oh, you need to be single for a long time, <laughs> child. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I didn't. That's amazing. Like that. What about you? Do you feel any pressure from friends or family? Yes. Yeah, so actually, my little brother and my little sister are both married with children. And about 90% of my friends are mothers. Single mothers, but they're mothers. So you definitely feel the pressure coming. But I just mm-hmm. want to encourage you not to ever give in to that pressure. You know, I just, I believe that, that God... I believe that his timing is perfect. Mm-hmm. And if that is the will of God for your life, and it sounds like it's a, it's a huge desire in your heart. Mm-hmm. So as you live for God and as you walk by faith, I know that he can fulfill those things that are in your heart. So just trust him. Don't rush ahead of him and, and know that his timing is perfect. So next, we're going to go to a couple questions from the audience. First question, do you think that you can find a Christian men on a non-Christian dating website? Jenny, you want to go first? I believe that you can. Uh, actually, one of my um, friends at the church, she met her husband on a non-Christian um, dating site. But even after talking to her about, uh, yeah, a non-Christian dating site, but even after, even talking to her about her story, she again felt led to, to go on there, and he um, felt led to go on there, and they uh he met, he found her the second day that he was on there. Wow. Yeah. So I believe that it can happen. If that's, Amen. if that's how the Lord, you know, wants has arranged it. Yeah, I agree. It. Um, another question real quick for you, Jen, were you ever embarrassed to reveal to friends and family that you met your husband online? If so, how did you overcome that feeling of embarrassment? Oh, that's a good question. I actually wasn't embarrassed, but I was very protective of it because, you know, everyone will have an opinion and think that, especially uh, there's a ton of backstory about my husband, and we reveal it all on, on our blog, SeanandJenniferSpears.com. Mm-hmm. You can find out about that story, but there's a backstory with some of the things that came with um, Sean, who's absolutely amazing. I love my husband. But um, – I was very protective of our story, so I only shared it with friends who I knew um, were my prayer partners, who could pray me through it, who would be praying for me behind the scenes, so um, and who would not cloud my judgment. So I wasn't um, I wasn't embarrassed about it, and we actually we 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 reveal it on on our blog as well. And um, but what I was really protective of, especially once we got married, are other single women. I didn't want them to look to my story and think that it's a formula. And I don't want everyone to just go run out and go on Christian mingle thinking that it's going to happen for them and then end up heartbroken. So I was very responsible in making sure that when we did share it, that we shared it the right way. Amen. No, that's good. Now, Nadine, I have a question for you. How do you define boundaries when you go on dates? Um, Well, first of all, just to be safe, I always meet them at a public place. That's good. And um, I don't ever get in the car with them. And then basically on a first date, the first question, are you truly a man of God? Are you dating with purpose? Are you marriage-minded? So I try to get that out of the way first to see where they're at. And if we're not on the same page, I politely tell them, like, I'm not the woman for you, not the man that I'm looking for. Like, this isn't going to work. Because I don't just date to date. Like you said, no randoms. I believe that. Amen. No, amen. So this woman that's in the audience, she's in an unequally yoked relationship and she's just having a hard time. It's on and off. Um, I think sometimes, and I can answer it, I think sometimes we get into unequally yoked relationships and actually have a show on that, but um, we get into those relationships hoping that that person's going to change. And most times we keep praying that they're going to change, but the Bible is clear. He said, do not the Lord said, do not be in those unequally yoked um, relationships. Um, light and darkness have, have nothing to do with one another. So most times you're like, oh, I need to pray. I need to fast. Actually, we just need to break it off. We just need to say, you know what? What's enough is enough. I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to cut off this ungodly relationship because they're pushing me away from the Lord and it's got no purpose. Um, last real quick question. You mentioned that he answered your email profile questions. What kind of questions did you list in your profile? What kinds of questions should we ask per, um, prospective dating matches? Wow. Um, I don't remember. Uh, I remember uh, on Christian Mingle, it asked you to talk about, um, I think it was different people that you connected with in the Bible. And I think I may have said Ruth, and I think he may have responded and said Paul or something like that. I don't remember specific questions. Um, and what was the, the part B of it? I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. Um, 
what are the what type of questions should we ask prospective dating matches? Perspective. I definitely agree with um, with what Nadine said. Are you a man of God? Are you a true man of God? Like, and what then, kind of Christian are you? Exactly. What kind of Christian are you? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> and then, and for real. exactly, are you safe for real? And then once yeah. you, and then once they, once you get the answer to that question, make sure that that fruit lines up with what he's saying. Mm-hmm. So that's definitely um, in, in, important. Definitely yeah. one of the main things. One of the main questions. Amen. How. Did you guys ever deal with that fear that, that, that says, you know, m- maybe I'll never get married? Like, maybe that's just not in the cards for me. Did you ever feel like that? Definitely. And how did you deal with that fear that came? You know, and I don't, I'm not saying this to, you know, because I am married now. This is, this is a true story. I really did feel that way. And I said, God, it's okay. Amen. I really did. I'm, whew, I said, it's okay. Because after I was in the relationship that I was in before, I was like, God, I never want to be that separate from you ever again. Amen. It pushed me so far away from him. And once I got back connected with God, I said, Amen. I will never, ever get in an unequally yoked relationship. I will never Amen. go ahead of you ever again. Amen. And I'm okay Amen. with it being just me and you. And I was content in that. And see, that's where we have to get to the point where, we're, where we are content. Amen. Because the thing about it is, is that, Marriage comes with a whole new set of struggles, yes. and it's a new season, and it's amazing, and it's wonderful. But it comes with a it comes mm-hmm. its responsibility, its covenant, and mm-hmm. it's and it's not to enter into lightly. So, don't go ahead of God. Be content where you are. Mm-hmm. Be mm-hmm. content where you are. Your love story is already it's already there. Just wait on God, and maybe it is that you're not content, and that may be what's holding up the man yeah. because there are things Amen. that he needs to develop in you. Amen. Really quickly, thank you for sharing. And then for me, actually, a couple of weeks ago, I was having a really hard time, and I was like crying. I was all upset about it. I talked to my girlfriends about it, and just it feels like you're lonely. Like that everybody else around you is married. There's happy relationships. They have children, and here I am still struggling to you know have somebody for more than like two weeks. Well, my encouragement to you guys, and as you mentioned, um, I believe that each season in our life is preparing us for the next one. So your single season is not the time to rush and try to search and find somebody to complete you. We should come already complete because Christ completed us. So, and know that exactly how you are right now, you're going to carry that into your marriage. So a ring is not going to satisfy those deep issues in your heart. A ring is not going to satisfy loneliness. Marriage solves aloneness. So you can still be lonely in a marriage. You can still have a pair of legal thighs in, the, in that bed sitting next to you, and you could still feel empty and still putting pressure on your spouse to fulfill you. Only Christ can fulfill those deep voids in your heart. So I challenge you guys, if you're struggling with you know being single, don't go searching all over this world because you'll search this earth this this world and you will look for those 100 million adults and you will quickly find out that you know what God your timing is perfect and I wasted a whole lot of time and I could have spent that time at your feet so I just want to thank you guys really quick could you share your Instagram handle so we could find you yeah it's the underscore recessionista awesome and you Nadine the sky girl and it's s-k-y-g-y-r-l and on Facebook, it's Jones Nadine, last name first. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate right. you guys thank for you sharing guys. your stories. And thank you so much for being on the Heather Lindsay Show and joining in today. Join us next Saturday at 6.30 p.m. on the Word Network. See you guys later.